we're going to get a look at the current state of my CNC machine. It's not quite ready, but I'm getting pretty close to starting to cut things. Uh, I still have a few adjustment steps to make and a few installation steps to make, but those are getting very, very close. You can see already it's no longer perched precariously on the edge of my bench. I built a shelf into the garage wall for it, so it has a solid place to stay. Um, I've now got all of the main components assembled. I'm going to give a quick tour of that. Uh, it, it's exactly the same major construction as before, the, the aluminum gantry uh, based off the Sol Silva plans. All of the existing cables are routed through the cable chains. Uh, I did want to talk about the connectors that I used. Uh, everything that I did, I did with 30 amp Anderson power poles. Uh, that is unusual based on everything that I've seen in the homemade CNC world. Everybody seems to use DB9 connectors. I hate DB9 connectors. They're a pain to work with, they're a pain to solder, they're just, I don't like them. I had a huge bag of power poles, uh, so I was able to use that. It's nice, they're crimp type, uh, they lock pretty positively, and what I was able to do with these was then color code to make sure that I was always able to keep things aligned correctly. You can see they pop right out. It's a hermaphroditic connector, so uh, they're, they're, it's the same on both sides uh, and I could attach it incorrectly so what I did was I color coded the main power for two of the coils as either red or black uh, and that then let me make sure that they were lined up correctly and then I just went in with a sharpie labeled that as the control for my x-axis. The other thing that I did was the cable that I'm using is not the Cat5 looking 22 gauge cable that came with the motor kit. I am using an 8 lead ham radio antenna rotor cable. It is instead of 22 gauge wires, it's a mix of 14 and 16 gauge wires. I am sure it is vastly over engineered for what I'm doing. Uh, I have my motors tuned down to about an amp and a half right now, so it's, it's pretty low power going across these cables, but this way over-engineered means I know it's always enough. Something that I do horribly wrong uh, is not going to be a problem for me. So I am going to get uh, the... My, my big step that I have left to do is I need to install the limit switches. I have all of the connectors in my control box back here for the limit switcher, switches set right now. This is the only limit switch that exists. It's just hanging off the back of the box. Little read snap switch. I know it'll work. Uh, so I know my connections are good. And that means that once I get all of the, the switches actually installed on the machine, all I have to do is hook it into that pair of wires back there. Uh, but I don't have the mounting blocks for those cut yet. That's actually going to be the first finished piece I've cut on the router. I'm going to rehook that. Uh, motor control cable back up and then I'm going to run it through a little test program which I watch carefully since I don't have any limit switches right now. So I'm going to go back to my control station. This is uh, Mach 3 and it's actually got the G-code set for the cuts that it has to make to cut the limit switches out of the uh, high density polyethylene that I have for it. Uh, I'm using that because it's non-conductive and it's cheap. I bought a $5 cutting board at Target. That's going to be the material for the switches. So I'm going to get this going and then get back over the machine and we can see it in action. Uh, I think it's really pretty cool when it's running. Uh, one thing that I do want to say is because this is made for cutting plastic, this G-Code program, the machine is moving pretty fast. It's probably faster than I'm ever going to run it on anything other than plastic. Uh, it does jolt a little bit. I'm not sure that the, the speeds that I have in there are really appropriate, but I'm going to cut a set of switches and see what happens. It's a cheap cutting board, so if it's off, it's off, and I adjust the speeds, and I try again. Alright, so here we go. You can see the program is running, it's moving, controlling the axes. And back here, starting with the plunges, and then just moving around, clearing out the pocket for the switch clearing out the mounting hole, and then at the end doing a profile cut.
And that's it. So so that's the program that's going to have to run to cut out each switch. I'm going to have five or six of them, depending on whether I put one at the down of the z-axis. Um, the other thing that I'm going to need to do, and, and this is a second order operation for me, is the mount for the router is pretty wonky. You can see I cut it on a bandsaw. I drilled a lot of things by hand. It's crooked. It's probably not nearly as straight as it needs to be, um, especially from right there. You can see how bad that side is. So I'm hoping it'll be good enough for me to be able to actually cut on the machine a set of router mounts. The other thing that I want to do is move them from the bottom of the gantry, the the piece was the axis up about two and a half inches. Um, right now, where it's positioned, when I mount the router in it, by the time you get the router and the collet and the bit, I don't have full plunge depth on the z axis. So I'm losing some of the height, and it's a relatively limited height machine to begin with. I'm going to move it up a couple of inches, and that will give me more range on the z so that I can cut as high or as low as possible, which is probably about five inches uh, realistically speaking given where we would start to interfere with other than the internal components so i'm going to start cutting things pretty soon i'll try to get that recorded as well and we'll see how it goes